I was kind of a weird kid. I like to keep busy, and I would actually make little schedules for myself of everything that I wanted to accomplish on a typical day. Now, fast forward 30 years, I now run a busy research lab at the University of British Columbia. I also have an extremely energetic toddler, so I often feel like I'm kind of scrambling to keep up, like I never have enough time. Now, I realize that this is a profoundly unoriginal complaint. This is probably the quintessential kvetch of contemporary life. Many of you guys have probably heard this idea that we work more and have less free time than in the past. There's just one problem with this very familiar refrain. It turns out to be wrong. The best data suggests that, in anything, the opposite is true. Most people actually have more free time than people did in the past. Now, to be clear, when people are asked on surveys, they do say that they feel busier than people did in past decades. But when people are asked to keep detailed time diaries, recording what exactly they do with the 1,440 minutes of their day, turns out most people actually do have quite a bit of leisure time. So why do we feel so busy? Well, we can look to the usual suspects like smartphones and aging parents and lack of childcare and dual earner families, but I want to suggest that part of the answer lies in a more surprising place. Part of the perceived time famine of modern life may actually be a fallout of rising financial prosperity. To see how this works, Consider a recent experiment conducted at the University of Toronto in which students were asked to play the role of consultants. These students were asked to complete a variety of tasks and to bill a company for their time, just like consultants do. Now, some of the students were told to charge the company at a rate of 15 cents a minute, which works out to the rather paltry rate of $9 an hour. Other students, chosen completely at random, were asked to do exactly the same stuff, but they were told to charge the company $1.50 a minute which works out to $90 an hour. Now, even though everybody was told to do the same stuff for the same amount of time, by the end of the experiment, people who were told to charge that higher rate ended up feeling significantly more pressed for time. So in other words, making students' time worth $90 an hour was all it took to turn them into time-squeezed, stressed-out consultants. So why would this be? Why would increasing the economic value of our time make time feel scarce? Well, we all know that when something is scarce, it tends to be perceived as valuable. So think of diamonds, or drinking water in the desert, or men at yoga classes. <laughs> now, this is such a well-learned association that scarcity and value are almost like conjoined twins. When something is scarce, we tend to perceive it as valuable. And conversely, when something is valuable, we tend to perceive it as scarce. So as the economic value of our time increases, we may perceive our time as scarce. And this might help to explain why people today feel busier than in earlier decades. Over time, economic downturns notwithstanding, incomes have risen in the United States and other countries. So your time today is actually worth more money than it would have been back in 1960. So part of the reason people today feel busier than they did in the past might be that their time is worth more money. Now, interestingly, the same basic principle holds true within any one individual's lifetime. So, for example, um, if you think about when you were a teenager, you were probably mowing the lawn or making a little money babysitting. Often, once people hit their 20s, they're working in low-paid internships. By their 30s and 40s, people often have real jobs and rising incomes. So over the life uh, span, incomes tend to rise. So if you feel busier now, if you feel more pressed for time now than when you were younger, part of the reason might be that your time is worth more money than it was back in the day. Now, it turns out that some individuals are particularly inclined to see their time as money. So can you guess who these people are? Some of them are probably among us right now. I'll give you a hint. 76 million Americans fall into this category. Speaking here of hourly workers, people who are paid by the hour compared to those who earn a salary are significantly more likely to see their time as money. 
And it turns out that this affects the way people choose to use their time. In particular, people who are paid by the hour are significantly less likely to engage in volunteer work. Now, that's unfortunate because volunteering is not only good for communities, it also benefits individuals' own happiness. Of course, this is also understandable, right? If you are acutely aware of how much money your time is worth, you might be a bit reluctant to give it up for free. And yet, remarkably, in our own recent research, we find that people may be unwilling to give up even a few seconds of their time to help something else, namely the planet, when they're aware of how much money their time is worth. Now, if you think about it, most environmental behaviors require a few extra seconds of our time. So, for example, in a recent survey, almost 7,000 people in Britain were asked how often they engaged in everyday environmental behaviors to help the planet, things like taking their own shopping bag when shopping or turning off the lights when leaving the room. Now, again, these kinds of environmental behaviors ultimately help the planet, but in the short term, they cost you a few seconds. Now, when we analyzed this data, what we found was that people who were paid by the hour, who tend to think of their time as money, were significantly less likely to engage in these everyday environmental behaviors that take a little bit of time. Now, to be clear, just because these variables are related, just because being paid by the hour is associated with less environmental behavior, doesn't necessarily mean that being paid by the hour, seeing time as money, causes a reduction in environmental behavior. So to put that causal question to the test, we wanted to bring students into our lab and get some of them to see time as money, like hourly workers typically do. So to do this, we had them solve a math problem. We had them figure out what their hourly wage was likely to be after graduation. We had them estimate their annual income as well as how many hours they were likely to work per week and how many weeks they would work per year. Then they divided how much they expected to make by how much they expected to work, and that gave them an estimate of their um, hourly wage after graduation. Now, we predicted that just doing this simple math problem, just making students aware of the potential economic value of their time, would make them less likely to engage in an environmental behavior like recycling. Now, to look at this, we had to give them an opportunity to recycle. So we gave them some paper, and we asked them to cut out a variety of shapes. Now, we led them to believe that we were really interested in how exactly they cut out these shapes. In fact, we didn't care at all about these shapes. What we cared about was what they did with their leftover scrap paper. So our experimenter casually remarked to the participants, when you're done with this task, you can dispose of your scrap paper in the trash or in a recycling bin just outside the lab room. So when participants finished uh, cutting up the paper, they could take the scrap paper over to the trash bin just at the edge of the lab room, or they could walk a few more feet out into the hall and go put their paper in the recycling bin. Now, because everyday environmental behaviors typically, typically require a little bit of extra time, we set this all up so that it took people an average of about three seconds longer to get to the recycling bin rather than just dumping their paper in the trash. So our question here, is will people take those few extra steps and those few extra seconds to recycle their paper like environmental heroes, or will they simply dump the paper in the trash? Well, when we just brought people straight into the lab and had them do this paper-cutting task without first asking them to calculate their hourly wage, almost half of them recycled. So almost half of them, 41%, uh, went to the uh, recycling bin rather than going for the nearby trash can. However, when we first asked people to calculate their hourly wage, only 12% recycled. So simply leading students to think about the economic value of their time substantially reduced their willingness to take a few extra seconds to engage in environmental behavior. So putting this together, what we're learning is that when people see their time as money, they're less willing to volunteer, and they're less willing to take even a few seconds to help the planet. So, this is why I have a bone to pick with Benjamin Franklin. It was Ben Franklin who first told us to remember that time is money. Now, I think Ben Franklin said a lot of smart stuff in his life. This was not one of them. I want to suggest that this was really bad advice. When we see our time as money, 
were reluctant to give any of it up to help other people or help the planet. And yet, ironically, new research shows that giving our time away for free is actually one of the best ways to escape that feeling of time famine that I described in the beginning. For example, in a recent experiment, researchers at Harvard University and UPenn asked people to sign up for an experiment in which they would do whatever the researchers told them to do on a Saturday morning. So imagine you're in this study, so Saturday morning rolls around. Here's the set of instructions you get. As part of this experiment, we want you to spend 30 minutes doing something for yourself that you weren't already planning to do today. Great, you're basically told, take some me time as part of this study, sounds good. Now other people, chosen completely at random, got almost the same set of instructions, but they were told to spend that time doing something for somebody else. Now on the surface, I think the people in that first group kind of seem like the lucky ones. They were told to, you know, take some me time on a Saturday morning. That sounds great. And yet, what the results revealed was that people who did spend that time doing something for somebody else ended up seeing their own time as more plentiful and expansive, and the future is more filled with opportunities. When we help other people, we feel like a effective individuals, like masters of our domain, who can accomplish whatever we need to do. So the message that I want to leave you with today is if you feel like you don't have enough time, try giving some of it away. Thank you.